following is brought to you by Cranbrook Television Limited. Welcome to Round Pound. 1978 Sam Steele Day is correct. 30 seconds of that, and that 30 seconds is equivalent to three months' work in the dark to produce really? it. Yeah, it's astounding. I've, I've seen uh, some, I saw some of it before the interview began, and uh, it's very impressive. I don't know, you, you know, it, it's inconceivable to me because I don't know anything about it, but as you say, if it takes that, that length of time, it's obviously very involved. Uh, it's this uh, combination, I guess, of superimposing and, and, and it's all done in the dark, is it? Yeah, because exposures run about oh, 30 to 90 seconds for exposure. I see. You could have 100 exposures per frame. Where did you do your filming? Um, all the animation and stuff was done in the Cranbrook, in um, the back of the jewelry store at the time. We didn't even have a studio built then. And the major live stuff was shot in Vancouver and Calgary, Edmonton. And the rest of the opticals was shot in Toronto. Some of it in New York. Mm -hmm. And we finished it in Toronto. I see. What about uh, people who appear in the movie, Man Woman? Are you the... Um, yeah, most of it takes place at art shows and happenings and uh, solstice celebrations out at communes. And just, it was t totally experimental sort of things. Uh, some of it was done at uh, coffee houses, you know, with folk music and uh, in that kind of environment. Where did you conceive the idea? I mean, uh, was it a, was it a central thought, or was it a, was it just a a general feeling that this was the kind of thing you wanted to do? Well, did I just started kind of doing all these happenings and all these artworks, and which were kind of radical and kind of revolutionary, and Harry started filming these events and it just got crazier and crazier and crazier. <laughs> so you, and you just, just sort of started grew. putting pieces together and decided that it was going to turn out to be a film? Yeah. Well, he had a, a CBC crew and a CTV crew and I went there with my crew and it was crazy. There's 400 people in this little gallery that only should have had 100 people in there. Good and there was a rock band, too. Good thing you didn't have a fire marshal on the door. Like yeah. uh, the first time, I, I served communion with death to everybody who came to this art show, and I made all these little cookies in the shape of skulls with raisins for the eyes, and everybody who came to this show had communion with death, and all went away eating these little cookies and you know all kinds of things like that. I did one whole show that was nothing but skulls and I had skull motorcycles, uh, skull racing cars, skull helicopters, skull telephones, skull violins and everything was made of skulls. And we did a death dance and um, the, the whole idea was to sort of um, get on top, on top of death or sort of uh, like a triumph over death like rebirth is what it was symbolizing mm -hmm. and this was exciting and pretty soon uh, we had hundreds of people showing up to all these shows and then in another one I did popcorn communion which was a whole other thing uh, expressing the kind of rapid explosion of consciousness mm -hmm. that takes place uh, in a person that's meditating and you know a lot of it's connected with meditation and 
well, not that it's connected with an organized meditation, but that when you meditate, all of these creative ideas start to happen. Yeah. Are you trying to uh, to make people realize that in, in perhaps creating a, a light atmosphere that they're, they're maybe looking into themselves without realizing that this is what they're doing? Like you're talking about popcorn communion and yeah. skull cookies yeah. with raisins. And so yeah. people automatically are going to go, you know, ho-ho, isn't that crazy? It's, it's really funny. Um, but there's obviously something more to it. Oh, there's something very serious about it. Like one of my big creations that kind of got me a lot of controversy, and I was on Peter Zosky and all that with my, my instant confession, which is a barf bag. And uh, <laughs> sometimes these priests would come to me later and they'd say, you know, there's a lot of theology in some of these <laughs> things you're doing. And I was just taking it from a different point of view. Like, the, the world of religion is really very stereotyped and very dogmatic and it has come to a, a kind of end point and now it has to break out of that and become alive all over again. And what we need in that field, if it's going to survive, is creativity on part of the people that are involved. Like, how do you think their religion arrived at what they've got now? Uh, Mozart wrote the Mass and somebody else wrote something else and pretty soon it all came together and now it's very traditional and it's you need to break out of all that, mm -hmm. but it was done by artists, most of it. All the ceremonies and all the rituals and all the music and everything was done by artists. And now this is a different generation, like a pop generation, so we've got to have pop ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the whole rock and roll phenomena is evolving into a whole brand new spiritual experience, and it will evolve into a religion. It will. You know, it's very interesting because uh, we are affiliated with a very, you know, old established church and it's very interesting to see what's happened even within that church in the, mm -hmm. in the you know, things like folk mass. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Where instead of the organ and the established choir, there are kids up there with guitars and tambourines and mandolins and, and everybody is, uh, and it's toe tapping, hand clapping yeah, yeah. stuff and the kids are up. Um, well, you know, up at the front and and uh, up and down the aisles, and well, this is you know this is we're uh, we're still planning a folk mass with Humphrey and the dump trucks. Yeah, uh, they're good friends of ours from Saskatoon. I don't know if you've heard of them, yes, but I have, yeah. uh, Humphrey dump truck is a is a paper bag Catholic. Uh, there were so many people involved in this too. It wasn't just my own self. I don't know. It just seemed to catch on, and it was crazy. Yeah. I we spent about five years in Edmonton and. Uh, the most incredible things happened and it attracted a lot of publicity and, and these things are still going. And, and then people said, well look, let's, let's uh, get this organized and start yeah. uh, charging admission or really? start, uh, start getting a roll call and having members who pay dues and all that. And I said, look, this is what I'm trying to get away from. I'm trying to get away from all of that. Really? What I'm trying to say is we need more spontaneous joy and more spontaneous celebration of life involved in the spiritual uh, aspect. Uh, yeah. a, you know, aspect of our life instead of all these little boxes and little dogmas. And right. Harry, how, um, in terms of the, you know, the, the profession, uh, how have you found the reaction? Uh, you know, have you taken the, the movie elsewhere? Have you shown it? In we showed it at the University of Toronto mm -hmm. and Edmonton, Calgary and Nelson and a lot of the reaction was when can we have our non-college friends see it? Because the reaction was very favorable. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of led us to do the thing with the arm and now um, Dem and Place and Vancouver's West End want to show it. Because mm -hmm. there's a population there is, is oh, uh, well, more than South Manhattan. Yes. And so I think it's going to be very good for that. Good. But the reaction has been really favorable because we've got 33 separate musicians in this film. Rock and roll and bluegrass and uh, folk and um, other experimental things, including Bobby Hales and Patty Hervey and really? people like all So if, if your response continues to be good, you'll It'll be things will be really moving. Coast to you? coast. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in America, too. That's fantastic. And you know, anything new like this that uh, people aren't quite used to or that may be just a little ahead of the time, like this has all happened, this is in the future. Like, like this is just the beginning. I'm one of the artists who just happened to be hit with some of these kind of things. But you watch, this is the first wave and the next wave is this whole society is going to be swept away with an incredible rebirth. And I don't like even using the word religion because it, a lot of people have 
bad connotations with it or bad connections. They think of dogma and they think of force and like all the sin and guilt and all that kind of stuff we had crammed down our throat when we were kids and all of that. But, okay. but the thing that's happening now is an incredible rebirth of joy and when you come out with something and you're the first one, you can step on other people's beliefs a little bit and maybe they think you're making fun of them, but I had no intention of that. I had none at all. Are, have you been really sort of the innovator in, in, this, in doing this particular, there's sort of yeah, nothing? Yeah, I originated the whole yeah. paper bag. Uh, yeah, there's nothing trip. that's been done like this before. No, not yeah. that I know of. Yeah. I would think that uh, my question would be, I wonder, what the reaction is going to be from the people of Cranbrook. I think it will be well, very interesting to see. Like a, a lot of the things I do are strictly experimental. Like an artist will paint one painting today and another tomorrow and he might compare them and say, well, this one, this one says more of what I want to say and he'll try different things. And the same with all these little rituals. Some I tried and some worked. Some were better. Some were more successful. And, and I keep moving on and I keep searching for new forms. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm in kind of a quiet, low profile. Mm -hmm. came back here to get away from all of the you know the publicity and the controversy really? and yeah. all of that and and I'm into a very serious art space but I was in that before I went into the other thing mm -hmm. so you know it comes and goes in, in different phases mm -hmm. the uh, <coughs> I think it will be interesting to see uh, it's it's almost sort of a value consciousness kind of thing to see that the different reactions between the different age groups that will watch the movie because it will turn I would think a tremendous number of the younger people on. It does, and yeah. A lot of yeah. Success it and it will, woo, alienate <laughs> some of the. I don't well, know. You know, it don't can. Know. Or they'll say. Depends what I'd, background they Or they'll say, I did, did, did you understand that? I, you know, I yeah, well, some of them will say that for sure. What was he trying sure. to say, you know? And, you know, they, they can the still, they can enjoy yeah. it, but they don't, they say, well, yeah. gee, I don't quite understand that. Yeah. It has yeah. a lot to do with uh, cultural relativity and, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. You see, you have to see it from the point of view of experiment and learn and move and grow. You know, like all the revolutions and all the liberations that are happening in the world now, people want to grow. They don't want to stay in the same little box forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, well, yeah. uh, from what I've seen, uh, this is anything but that. I think <laughs> maybe we're ready to see uh, one of the first film clips that we have and, and I think we'll just watch it Harry and then after we've watched it uh, you can perhaps make some explanation as to what is going on. me away. <laughs> I mean, that is the sort of thing, you know, that a child would sit in front of and be absolutely transfixed. And as you say, uh, as we were watching it, Harry said, uh, I don't believe the hours that went into it. <laughs> yeah. um, why the swastika? Oh, well, that, that was only a reflection of his various kinds of archetypal images that he used, right? Mm -hmm. So I collaged them into, I guess that's 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Circles, triangles, swastikas, uh, crosses, 
Jewish stars a day, just a day basically everything. Basically, religious symbol yeah, stuff. Yeah. Which yeah, the swastika well, plus was. Plus the bride, yeah. plus electric guitars, yes. the happy hearts. All the music is fantastic. Bobby Hales wrote that. Oh. He wrote Beachcombers and uh, Manipulators, musical director for Rolf Harris. You see, there's so much coming at you in this film, it, it takes you months afterwards to figure out what was going on. Because, like, okay, the, You'd the music... You'd almost like to isolate one and sense and just the, use that. Like, there's I, the animation. Yeah, I'd rather watch it almost and, right. and, and then listen to the music and then try and put the two together because you're so busy trying to sort of, uh, right, you know, right. get the two. And then there's these images, like the swastika, for example, mm -hmm. and that conjures up certain feelings. Mm -hmm. and then, and all the visuals are conjuring up feelings, and the music is conjuring up feelings, and it's like that. The whole the whole film's like that. There isn't there isn't a moment that it slows down. Yeah. It moves. The film will get you uh, high just by the mm -hmm. visual, audio visual trip that it it presents to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that in fact that is as much the message as what's actually said. Feel good when you come out. Yeah, because the combination of what it does to you. It's yeah. a natural high. Yeah. yeah. How did you find doing this, Harry, from a, you know, a, a prefer you've obviously been in this business and you've been down in L.A. doing it and stuff. Um, was it a real thrill to, to kind of get in and be able to experiment and, and do all these? Not for a while. It no? was just like, it was just doing what I was doing until I started to well, assemble all the live action sequences and then I put together the rock group, The Precious Blood, which is now called The Immaculate Contraption. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's fitting. We, no, we got the music written for it, we rehearsed it, and the rock group, they're all painted, the bo their bodies are all painted, and uh, we staged it and we did all sorts of things and all the other musicians with all their other talents and it started to grow and then the excitement started to happen every time there was something happening I'd go off for weeks and follow them around plan things execute things and you're if you're a producer and director and a cameraman you know you're really busy and we were shooting at the hovel in Edmonton so I went over and got 74 hamburgers for my crew <laughs> right and it was very interesting. Every time I go out there, I would be producer and director and cameraman. I'd get hire a half a dozen golfers to help me, and they'd go for anything. <laughs> Sometimes they wouldn't come back, <laughs> right? Small problem. Yeah, yes. and it got to be very well. It's like uh, it's like a good chef, or it's like um, doing whatever you do best, but really doing it doing on a, your own. Doing a super painting or something. Yeah. Just doesn't matter what it is, making a great mud pie. Yeah, you know, it's your touches, own, it's yeah. yours, right? Yeah. And the fantasy of it, like that three-dimensional animation. You walk out somewhere. How do you conceive? That's what I was going to ask you. How do you do you conceive of something in single dimension first? I mean, do you see like the the bride thing? I mean, do you see that flat on and then sort of just develop it in your your head and and know how you want it to look when you're finished, or or does it just happen as you're working with it? Well, sometimes I see that when I'm driving. <laughs> sometimes I see that when I'm t talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Or I'll see something, something will flash by me, like a car or a mm -hmm. neon sign or something. And I'll look at it and I think, gee, that might look nice in three dimensions. Carry a notebook and... No. <laughs> I go to a place, I put my head in to record, right? And it's like you just press the buttons and you record the visual and the audio at the same time. And I, I can remember. retract it from my mind and then go back to work in the dark and play with the images until I get what I want from it. And it's like uh, I'm still waiting for that saucer to land and a really friendly person to come and say, well, mm -hmm. my song has always been stuff the world I want to get off, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't like this planet. <coughs> well, the planet's all right, but I don't like what's happening. So I always wanted to, somebody to come in a spaceship and take me away to a nicer place. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all these space movies, right? Yeah, and I think, gee, wouldn't that be neat if it was yeah. really true yeah. that there was some place better than Earth? Yeah. Well, yeah, but is. that's why we're here. We're here because we have the responsibility to make this a better place. Yes. I think you just do it, right? This, yes. We do it. <laughs> like you have to follow your dream. This is yeah. the creative act, like Harry's aspect and and my aspect of what went into this film. It's it can come to you in dreams, and uh, and it it is a big dream. An artist is a real dreamer. Like, he's not out there like everybody sort of 
trying to rip the next person off or, or, or at least uh, but I don't think you can generalize men totally full of fear of them, a lot of them are out there to, to make a big buck and if you lose yeah. your dream you yeah. lose your mind though yeah yes for sure yeah that's right you have, have to follow your dream there because it's convenient and it's making money and well I mean you know an artist in the true sense of the word I mean okay everybody has to make a living and that's part of it and and like I've got dreams and Harry's got dreams that could never be fulfilled unless some kind of money is flowing mm -hmm. through to just to turn it over. Right. But uh, you can take people are so afraid, you know, they hang on so tightly and, and it seems like the only value they have in their life is money and really? that's Did really you have trouble, you know, finding funding to do something like this? I mean, we something. did it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Did. yeah. totally. Yeah, well, we never went around and asked. But we you just see, asked if you, our family. Okay, if you if you were to do something like this again, I mean, obviously the, the film is receiving. We're going to. You know, and you will do another. Mm -hmm. Having done it, you know, once and having had the kind of coverage, I mean, if you're doing Peter Zosky and uh, you could obviously do uh, the equivalent of his old morning show on CBC Radio and have mm -hmm. a, a lot of really good, you know, um, coast to coast coverage, I would think that uh, that you wouldn't have any trouble getting funding from from other sources to do. Oh, we will, sure. The satire sure. will be fun, like Man Woman Meets Godzilla. Yeah. And Man Woman Saves Hollywood. <laughs> Man Woman Saves New York. King Kong. Right. Yeah, really. That's, that's... Uh, you know, it can progress. Yeah. yeah. Tin Tin and Man Woman Save Cranberry. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Maybe you should work on that one. Well, you know, there's the, the seed <clears throat> is there, and in this film there's, uh, there's so much in this film that could be expanded, developed, and with a lot more money behind it, we mm -hmm. could make a sensational mm -hmm. traveling stage production with, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, lots of live dancers and live uh, rock and roll groups and, yeah. and could be a cosmic mass all in a kind of a popcorn communion kind of a way. And this is the kind of thing, it's just, you know, when we get it together, we're going to have a trip that's going to be very controversial and it's going to attract a lot of attention mm -hmm. and I think the younger people particularly are just waiting for something mm -hmm. like this because look at all the the new directions that are opening up with meditation and yoga and everybody's searching for some kind of development of their own personality mm -hmm. and you know now we have to express it the first thing was all the Maharishis and all the everybody yeah. comes in and starts people looking into themselves a little deeper and improving their life and now when you start to experience these things then you have to to express it creatively yeah. it, it seems to me that within the last sort of I don't know five or six years the young people have have sort of gotten away from the uh, rebellious aspects of being adolescents and have gotten really into to, you know, to the kinds of things you're talking about, mm -hmm, truth mm -hmm. and honesty and, yep. and, and straight on. Well, it has to reverse, because the way it's going now, it's, a, it's kind of yeah. a dead-end street. Yeah. They encourage me uh, a lot of times a great deal more than... than There's a lot of... Wor the world consciousness has gone ones. up incredibly in the last few years, yeah. and it's going to go up very, very rapidly in the next few years. Do you find it frustrating having the kinds of imaginations that you two have? Yeah, sometimes, just because uh, for a long time there was no response with the community, but that is I mean, really... People would say, whoa, those yeah. guys are bonkers, eh? I mean, that would be... That's very quickly changing, yeah. and that's, it's exciting, because, yeah, it can be frustrating to be full of all kinds of neat ideas that you can't do anything with. Yeah. Yeah. Frustration also can come from uh, technical things. You can take a canvas and some boards and stretch it in acrylics and paint, and for me, it, it could cost me a hundred, two hundred dollars a minute just to fool around in the dark mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, Yeah, a lot of expensive opticals. equipment. Yeah. yeah. Well, you buy a camera, it costs you fifteen thousand dollars, and then you need all sorts of other things to go with it. Where, you, you fellows are both originally from Cranberry. Yeah, where, or where, born, where born here. Where did you uh, get this fantastic... We were born across the street from the elementary school there. Yeah, a little white house there, second from the corner. Still there. Sure. Kootenay Street, I think it's called. Yeah. Our father was born in Slaterville and made the big move to Cranbrook in 1909. <laughs> Came across. <laughs> the tracks. Came across the tracks, and then when he died, they put him across the tracks again. <laughs> yeah, back across the tracks. Where, where does this this fantastic creative talent come from? Is it, uh, you know, is it just something that that's happened, or is it in your family? Yeah, he used to play piano, violin, and draw cartoons, and our mother did all sorts of 
female crafts, mm -hmm. like crocheting and... Some men crochet very well. Yeah, well, she taught us to do that too, but yeah. we used to crochet also, and embroider and knit and all good. that nonsense. Super. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up you know, work. somebody told us that we had chosen that same, to be jump in the same womb together, to, to oh, just really? to yeah. come here and redeem Cranbrook. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, um, with that note, why don't we have a look at our second film clip and then maybe we can chat some more once okay. we're through. I guess we'll do what we did before. Welcome to the Celestial Circus. Hurry, hurry, step right up, folks. Don't miss this transforming experience. We've got for you a show to reveal your mind. There's death-defying joy, the cosmic joy ride, and the brides of mystical... We got the Madonna of the Kissable Lips and the Immaculate Contraption. We've got the Astonishing Virgin who gives birth out of her heart. The Shocking Twins who made love in their mother's womb and are joined forever in fiery ecstasy. Half man, half woman. <laughs> There's the Heavenly Musician with his guitar built into his body for profound sound. We've got the Amazing Bleeding Man who bleeds with love. And Lamb Boy, half lamb, half boy, he's a joy. What a sorrow? Bad as he. that the kingdom of God is within a person, that each person is required to express that in kingdom, each person is to sort of reach toward union with the divine, and he himself through his vision and his dream is, is sharing the kingdom of God as he finds it within himself. Just time for a short commercial here. <laughs> wow. There was, uh, as you say, enough in that small film clip to keep us talking for a lot of hours. Yeah, right. I'd uh, really like to zero in on the chap that y you were talking to mm -hmm. towards the end of it, Man Woman. Maybe you could tell you us a little bit about Father it. Bernie Bucks? Yes. Yeah. As you said, there would probably be a, a number of people in Cranbrook who <coughs> would remember. A lot of people should know him. Yeah, yes. He was a priest here for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew him actually independent of, of Cranbrook, mm -hmm. and we've followed him around. We're really good friends. He was an exceptional priest, and I think he was a little bit ahead of Cranbrook, too. Uh, you know, he, uh, he was pretty uh, revolutionary and very, very human and community-minded mm -hmm. sort of a person. Mm -hmm. And I think he kind of, 
he was somewhat in similar directions to me. He loves what I'm doing. He loves mm -hmm. popcorn communion. He loves all that kind of stuff. And Actually, you, you don't look kind of like. Yeah, right, right. Person. We've been uh, we we've, we've been told that. Mistaken yeah. for my And uh, I think he was maybe just a little too radical for Cranbrook well, that's uh, at that time. I meant to uh, to ask you this earlier in the interview, man, woman. Have you had any direct feedback from the religious community in Cranbrook about? some of the stuff you're doing? Posters? No. no. I've had feedback from people in religious organizations before, uh, from priests to uh, all kinds of ministers and that, mm -hmm. but a lot of them had very positive response. They, they liked my art and, they, and some of them really liked what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's liberals and there's conservatives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, small uh, L and a small C. <laughs> yeah, right. Small L and small C. <laughs> At this time C, of the right. year. And uh, you'd be amazed how many people in the uh, religious fields are really looking for new alternatives and new ways of doing things. And they recognize the fact that things do get decadent after a while. And, uh, and yet there's others who seem to hang on desperately to every little rule and regulation till the bitter end. So. Yes, unfortunately, I think there are a lot of people you know, involved in, in theology who would like to be able to be a lot more progressive and a lot mm -hmm. more you know, sort of community-oriented and are, are kind of held back by the, the official tenets of the church. And yeah, and, and those kind of official tenets really close the doors and all the Great, Creative. beautiful, yeah. like like things like uh, the serenity and the ecstasy and the joy and the and the love and the brotherhood and all of these things that religion is supposed to be about. You can look and look and look at some of these traditional churches and not find it, mm -hmm. or else it extends only to their group. Uh, you know, you you go to their meeting and they wash your feet or something, and yet they won't even look at you if you're not part of the group mm -hmm. like this kind of brotherhood is uh, there for for that limited group and it doesn't go any further and mm -hmm. it's these kind of things I think we have to really be on guard for because if you do that then certainly can't be a follower of the original original uh, well of the original Christ mm -hmm. Harry uh, did man woman do all the artwork in those film clips that we just saw and you coordinated it and got it in Well, that's just one that little tiny of, segment. Yeah, really? Th those were acrylic. Celestial Circus, that just kills me. <laughs> <laughs> so that we had, uh, well, we had oils, and then we had acrylics, and then we had uh, art objects, mm -hmm. and the guitars, and mm -hmm. their, you know, all those other things. Speaking of that, it makes me think of the uh, the show that you had at the library, and, I, and I've heard a lot of people. Oh, yeah making very favorable comments about it. I was very impressed, and I thought the, the coverage was excellent. And uh, Yeah, it, it was a, a nice people. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, am I'm sitting. actually selling some of them. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting on the library board, and I know that uh, the librarian, Stan Smith, was saying that a lot of people came into the library specifically mm -hmm. to see uh, you know, your work, and then he was kind of pleased because he, he they kind of bounced back and said, well, while I'm here, maybe I better take some books out. <laughs> so everybody benefited. <laughs> well, libraries uh, in the bigger cities are actually doing more things like that, the large show. And, well, we hope you know, to, to be sure, able to get Sure, it's good. Ourselves. It's good. And yeah. I think from here on, there probably there's a lot of artists around who could right. like to have the exposure. Right. And yeah. the t-shirt business is booming. Yeah. 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 This is one of our better selling t-shirts, it's like total that. silence. Yeah. I'd like to wear that one, only I'd like it to fit over the top of my head like this, <laughs> with two little peoples. <laughs> <laughs> oh. When you go to your next political rally. Yes, yeah. yes, that would be very good. Well, I have really enjoyed talking to you both, and I wish you both a great deal of luck. And uh, before we wind up the interview, I'd just like to say that the show is Paper Bag Catholics. That's on Monday evening at the Armand at 7.30 and 9 o'clock, correct? Right, yeah. I think maybe you should come and see it. It'll be an experience. This is Artis McIntyre from around town saying bye for now.